Genesis chapter 19. There's a lot here uh, dealing with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, let's read. Uh, let's read down through this for a while and not just stick with what I have up on the screen, but let's read down through this for a while and we'll have prayer. There came two angels to Sodom at even and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, behold, now my lords turn in, I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. And uh, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young. And I want you to underline old and young in your Bible. I'm telling you. I am telling you, the sexualization of children is taking place right now through, number one, the government school educational programs. Um, we heard, who, who told us this? Uh, I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe it was in Arizona. A school district had shown literally pornographic material to an elementary to elementary school classes and was talking about various things. Well, that's a violation of the law. That's breaking the law. That is called uh, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And one brave, I can't remember who they were, but they had went and talked to a judge about it and a judge said, I'll back you up. And at the next school board, school administration meeting, this person stood up and said, I have a judge on my side. It is judge so-and-so and gave his title and what judge he was over and everything like that. And that person said, the following people who are on the school board and school administration, you will either resign this evening or this judge is going to send the police to your house to have you arrested for contributing to the delinquency of a minor because of that event. I went, whoa, yeah. But believe it or not, their communities were to them that that would never happen. That would never happen because they're so liberal. They believe that the earlier you sexualize a child, the better off they are in life because then that, then that will reduce in their mind all of the, the old taboos about, you know, uh, what adults do and so on. And then they will be more free in life to live a better fulfilled life because of it. That's how some people believe it. Places like San Francisco, that's all they've been taught all their life, and that's what they believe. But anyway, it's not that, it's not that way in a lot of places in America. So anyway, um, the, the sexualization of children taking place in the public schools, you can see it in children's cartoons. If you watch Nickelodeon, if you watch Disney, if you watch these other children's cartoons channels, you can see the sexualization that is taking place that at the lowest age possible, they are introducing alternative lifestyles. They're introducing all kinds of things. Um, some of the toys that are being made. And I remember talking about this here a while back. There was a series of dolls that was put out that if and they would be sort of like you couldn't figure out what gender the doll was, but if you raise the the pants or the skirt up 
and rub your finger across the place between the legs, the doll would go, ooh, that tickles, or ooh, that feels good, or what, yeah, I'm not kidding you. Making dolls, that is, that is sick, it is disgusting. But that's what's going on. And when you read this, this Bible, when the Sodomites approached Lot's house, it was the young and the old. It is the old Sodomites who are creating the young Sodomites. Do you believe that? I'm not saying it's this way in every case. But in a majority of adult sodomites, they were sodomized as children, usually by a close family member or a close neighbor. Usually. That's how it's done. This is how we've gotten into what we've gotten into now. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, where was we? Uh, verse 4, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. We all know what that means. What they wanted to do to these two men. And we're talking probably about hundreds, possibly thousands of young men and old men who were going to pass these two angels around between themselves, taking turns one after another. Um, and Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now, now this is the sodomization of lot the bible calls lot a just man in other words and we'll we will read it later god delivering just lot meaning that in god's eyes lot was a justified he had been made justified justified by his faith and yet when, when we look earlier in Genesis 13, Lot was only living toward Sodom. Now, Lot is living inside Sodom. And there is a difference. If you, if you live out in the country, stay there. Don't move into town. Don't move in the city. Stay out of town. Stay out of St. Louis. Stay out of L.A. Yeah, stay out of L.A. I wish somebody would have told me that last week. Yeah. Stay out of L.A. You'll never get anywhere anyway. Traffic's too heavy. I mean, it's okay. Do business. You got to do business different places. You got to work different places. But keep your kids out of certain neighborhoods. Keep your kids out of certain environments. Keep your kids out of those cities. Okay? Keep them out of there. Um, it, you can tell it has had in its effect. That, and this is just my opinion of what I'm seeing in Scripture. For Lot, to his first, his first thought was to offer his daughters instead of the angels. That, that thought would not occur to me. But I believe it's because of the vexation. This is what the Bible does say about Lot. Lot being vexed. That means that what he saw going on in Sodom every day influenced him. It altered his perception of things. It caused him to compromise things that he may not have at one time compromised. And I'm telling you, the longer you live in, in Sodom, the more effect it will have on 
decisions that you make about raising children, about the value of your children, about the value of your family, about the value even of your own life, Lot would have been best served by living outside of Sodom, still trading with Sodom, but living outside of Sodom. That way his children and he himself would not see daily what was going on inside that, that city. It had, it vexed him to a point to where he was willing to trade in his own virgin daughters instead of sending out these two angels. Now these angels are the ones who told Lot in the beginning, we don't need to come in your house. It's like we're supermen. We're gods. We're angels. We can do, we can fend ourselves. We can do whatever we want to. These guys ain't going to hurt us. I don't care how many show up. But in, this is just my opinion now. I can clearly see the vexation and the compromise that living in Sodom has had an effect on the way Lot thinks. If you were to, if you were to, if you were to go back in a time machine and bring a, a, just a, a, a group of, of men from the 1940s into the year 2021 and let them see what this world has become, what would be their reaction? This is wicked. This is awful. And I didn't say saved men. I didn't say, I didn't say get a couple Baptist preachers and bring them up. I said, just go back and get a, just a group of men, bring them back into 2021 and let them see what has become of the world. Be, because of the changes that have taken place slowly over the years, we have become vexed by those decisions and by those changes in our culture. And some of this stuff has taken place in some of your lifetime. Some of it's taken place in my lifetime. So those of you who are older than me, it's taken place in definitely in your time. You have seen more changes than I have. But just the changes that I've seen is enough. Okay? But I've tried to pay attention over the years of my life at what is happening and what has changed in my lifetime. And I don't like this world. When I compare it to the world that I grew up in as a child, I like that world better. But when I look at that world as a child, I knew that I, I grew up in the 70s. So definitely there was a lot of problems then. But there was an earlier time in our country when God blessed our nation because even the lost people had certain things that were right. You had in the military, they all, they all prayed. That was part of military training. That's part of, I watched a, a Marine Corps boot camp video from 1970. And religious participation was mandatory in boot camp. You had to, those, those boot camp trainees had to stand in front of that table and read a prayer of thanksgiving to God before they could sit down and eat their meal. That was in 1970. Is it still that way in the military? I'm pretty sure it ain't. Okay, this is what we have become. And it's not getting better, it is getting worse. And there's, I have a lot to say about that. Let me keep reading here. I'm, I'm getting off my notes here, but anyway. Um, so he said, verse eight, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you bring them out unto you. Do you unto them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing for, for therefore came un, they under the, the shadow of my roof. I would have, I would have slapped lot silly. What are you doing? Turning your daughters out. What are you nuts? So verse 9, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with him than, than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot. 
and came near to break the door. Now you listen to this. You listen to this. Because part, as I go through Genesis 19, and again, it's going to take a while. There's a lot in the Bible about Sodom. A lot in the Bible. One of the things is God knows how to protect whom he's going to protect. Hey, I want everybody to listen to me for a second. Do not be afraid of what's coming. God has been saving and protecting his people long before you were born. They threatened to kill Lot. Did they kill Lot? Were they even allowed to touch him? No. Lot was saved. Lot was saved from the Sodomites. Lot was saved from their vengeance. And Lot was saved from the vengeance of God. God is in the saving business. If you are truly his saint, God always protects his saints. Always. Do not be afraid of what man can do to you. Do not be afraid of that at all. Okay? And that's, that's going to be part of it. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. Verse 11, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. You know, that's exactly what Paul did to uh, Bar Jesus, the sorcerer who was trying to keep Sergius Paulus, the deputy, from hearing the gospel. When Paul confronted him, he called him, Thou child of the devil, and he smote him with blindness. God did the same thing with Egypt. He didn't necessarily smite them with blindness. He just smote them with darkness to where they couldn't see a thing. And yet, it's real funny. I would have loved to have seen that. There was a line going down the field that if you were in Goshen... It was bright, sunny daylight and a line that if you crossed into that line, you're in Egypt and can't see a thing. I would love to see that. I'd like to see that CGI. I wouldn't care. I'd just like to see it in a movie somewhere. Amen. Uh, verse 12, and the men said unto Lot, hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now, I want you to understand this one thing. What's past is prologue. What has happened will happen. The thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. The destruction of Sodom is a prophecy. And it's a prophecy for a lot of things. Okay? And I'm going to spend time dealing with those prophecies. What God didn't just destroy Sodom and say, well, it's the last time I'll ever do anything like that. He didn't do what he, he didn't say that like what he said concerning the flood. I'll never flood the earth again. He didn't say that. Sodom was to remain an everlasting sign to every generation this is what god does to those who refuse his laws and precepts this is what god does to them we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the lord and the lord has sent us to destroy it and isn't it interesting you read the book of revelation who does god use to pour out vials of wrath it's angels and here it's two angels that are going to call down fire and brimstone from heaven. And, and I've got a lot to say about that too. So you just might as well dig your heels in, make yourself comfortable, bring pillows to church and everything else. Because we're going to be in, we're going to be in Genesis 19 a long time. All right. Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters and said, up, get ye out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. His daughters chose the wrong men. 
Be not unequally yoked, saith the Lord. You picked the wrong wife. You picked the wrong husband. You're going to be in for a lot of heartache. Those sons-in-law, the Bible says that they had married them, but obviously they had not consummated that marriage, so they were, they were just betrothed to them, engaged, which was still legal back in those days. But they had not been with them because Lot said that they were virgin daughters. But those sons-in-law mocked Lot. And said, you, you stupid old man, what makes you think that that's even going to happen? How about we just, if you're going to leave, won't you just leave us the keys to your house? We'll just, we'll just stay here. Now we got us a free house to live in. And if you're going to take your daughters, go ahead and take your daughters. We'll just be bachelors living in a bachelor pad and we can have all the women or whatever they wanted. Verse 15, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the, while he lingered, people, there's coming a day when we're not going to have the time anymore. The time is going to run out. And while you may say, but I still have this to do, I still have that to do. God's saying, I'm sorry, but it's time. While they lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth. Underline that, the Lord being merciful unto him. Underline that in your Bible. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Lot, you've lived in Sodom too long. Here God is showing you plainly that if you'll just do what he said and, and trust him, I mean, has he not already saved you from the Sodomites bashing your door in, has he not saved you from what you're about to see pour down on Sodom? Has not God saved you? Why don't you have enough faith to go to the mountain like the two angels told you to go? He has been too sodomized in his mind. And I would say probably lost some of his trust in the Lord. God's still merciful to him. But Lot still has fear and he's afraid. Um, let's see here. Verse 20. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning thee this thing also that I will not overthrow this city for for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. And you get this idea that Lot, even though, like I said, it, back in Genesis 13, he's content at that point with living in the fields. But you see him now living in the city. And when he's told to go and flee to the mountains. Lot still got city boy in him. And what did the last city gain him? Nothing. When the Bible says in Genesis 13 that Lot chose the well watered plains of Sodom. He was choosing that because he's thinking I'll have the markets in town. I'll be able to trade and get good money. 
We'll be able to buy whatever we want. We'll, we'll trade well. We'll live well. We'll have merchandise. And that's part of it. Sodom is Babylon the Great. And Babylon the Great is merchandise. Selling. Buying. Making gain. The love of money. Instead of the love of God. And it seems to me that Lot has that in him. He's afraid to go to the mountains. Why? Because there's nobody to buy and sell from there. There's no Walmart there. There's no grocery store there. There's no Levi Jean store there. There's no shoe stores there for his daughters. So he can't live up there. There's a little city not too far from here. They got a dollar gentral. We'll be content with that. That's what I'm getting out of this. It looks like Lot has become too cityfied to live out in the country. And that's how he was raised. He was raised by Abraham and taught how to farm, taught how to raise cattle. In fact, they had so much cattle that their herdsmen strove together. God had blessed Lot while he was living out in the country. But Lot chose Sodom and he lost everything. And I guess he forgot how, I guess he forgot how to trust God to live away from the cities again. He should have learned, Lot, raising your family in the city, it cost you your two son-in-laws, it cost you your wife. And you were willing to throw away your own daughters. Didn't you learn anything from living in the cities? I, think, I want you to think of something. In the state of Missouri, in, in the 2020 election, who was it that gave the votes of the state of Missouri to Donald Trump? Was it Kansas City and St. Louis together? Or was it every other county combined that outvoted St. Louis and Kansas City? It was the country people. You're not going to drive up around the suburbs of St. Louis and find a lot of Trump banners still flying on people's rooftops. But you go down here to Fredericktown, Farmington, Bon Terre, Springfield... They're all still down there. They've still got them hanging. They're ready for the next election. They say, bring it on. And they're the ones that bought up all the ammo, so you ain't got none now. I'm not saying it's a sin to live in a city. What I'm telling you is, by far, in this country, the cities, for the most part, are liberal, very liberal. And in the outlying areas, in fact, you can look at a map of the whole country of the 2016 election, the one that we don't think they cheated on much, and look at all the counties that went red, and look at all the little bitty counties that went blue, and you'll see that a majority of the people who don't live in the big cities, I'm talking about St. Louis, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, L.A., you know, places like that. That's what I'm talking about. You couldn't pay me to live in Los Angeles or New York City or San Francisco. God, please do not move this ministry. To San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. Who wants to move up there where they voted in drugs or you get all the free drugs you want now? Who wants to move up there? Nobody with a brain. We see the sodomization of all the cities in this country, don't do we not? But the country folk it seems like they're the ones who still got some sense 
of what's right and wrong. Okay? And it's basically the battle between two cities, Heavenly Jerusalem and Mystery Babylon the Great. Um, well, let's see here. It's a little after four. Let me read just a little bit more. Verse 23, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. By the way, there are two other cities. Sodom, Gomorrah, uh, Ad, Adma, and what was the other one? Zeboam, Fourth Kingdom. What God did to those four cities is how God is going to do this world through the fourth kingdom. Okay? There's a, there's a connection there, and I'm going to show it to you as we move on. The Lord rained upon Sada and Gomorrah f brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. I've been told that uh, archaeologists have discovered some sort of lie, uh, brimstone, which is sulfur pit, that was like, I don't know, 100 miles away from that area. And they say there's evidence that it exploded and blew all those chunks down. I'm not sure of that. Because when I read this, it doesn't tell me that the, the brimstone and fire came from some sulfur pit somewhere. It tells me that it came from heaven. Now that is a clue. That is a clue for those who know the Bible. Okay? Fire coming down from heaven. What is it the false prophet is going to show everybody in the world that he can do? Call fire down from heaven. And that, to me, is related to this. Okay? And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him. She went backwards, didn't she? And became, she became a pillar of salt. So I'm going to stop right there. And uh, like I say, there's a lot to get into on this. So just be prepared for it. I told you anything that I study, we just, I like, I don't like leaving chicken or even um, chicken batter on a chicken bone. The batter and the meat comes off and then the bone's done. Okay? Especially if you really like the batter that it was fried in. Get that off of there. And that's what we're going to do with this. All right? Let's stand to our feet. We'll be dismissed. I want you to think of fire. The four cities. Study the words Sodom and Gomorrah all through the Bible. Old and New Testament. Study every place that, that mentions it. In the book of Revelation, God called Jerusalem Sodom. What does that tell you? All right, let's pray. Father, bless your word. There's a lot. God, there's so much here. And it's exciting, Lord, for me to be able to dig deep into this and pull out all these wonderful treasures that you said were in your word. To behold wondrous things out of your law. To be fed meat instead of just milk, Father. Lord, teach us great and mighty things which we know not. And Father, while we're on this earth, just Lord, just help us to just like pretend in our mind, God, that we've got another thousand years down here and we're just going to spend it learning everything we possibly can 
about your word so that when you return, you'll find us ready. We've studied to show ourselves approved unto you. So bless your word in us, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. You are dismissed.